Hey guys, it's Tarkas from Tarkas Gaming. I'm just going to do a quick cocoa bean farm tutorial to give you some of the news on the update of 1.3. The farm itself is pretty simple. It's just a wall of jungle trees with a button on the side. When you press the button, a wall of water will come down and wash all the beans down, and then you can replant them. I'll quickly demonstrate by pressing the button, and you'll see when the water comes down, the cocoa beans will be washed down, and then they'll gather in the middle for you to pick them up. Now I'm going to run down here and I'll show you how to build it. You're going to want to start by building your wall of jungle trees. I'm going to build mine 10 wide by 4 high, but you can, you can make it any size you want depending on the yield you expect to get from it. Uh, one thing that's new in 1.3 you may have noticed there is that the logs can now be placed in different directions. I believe there are now three different ways that you can place blocks, three different orientations. Once you're done your jungle wall, you're going to want to build a frame around it. I'm going to use smooth stone just because it's easy, but you can use whatever you want and whatever you think looks good. Uh, once you build up the frame around it, you're going to want to place a row of your, your block behind the top layer of the jungle. And on top of this, you're going to want to place an entire row of sticky pistons facing the jungle, the jungle wall. Directly behind the pistons, you're going to place another row of smooth stone or whatever you're using. And on top of this, you're going to want to place a line of redstone going the entire length. Somewhere in the middle, you're going to want to place a redstone torch so that these are always powered. And then you're going to want to bring this down to a button that you will have at the side of your jungle wall. You'll want this inverted so that the pistons are by default powered. And when you press the button, they become unpowered and they retract. Once you get this set up, you're going to want to go and create the water container at the top. You're going to want to start by placing an entire row of blocks, whatever block you're using, in front of each sticky piston. And then you're going to want to add one to the end, followed by an entire row on top of each piston arm that goes the entire length, and another block at the other end. Once you're done here, you're going to want to place another row of whatever block you're using directly adjacent to the ones in front of the piston arm. This will be part of the roof of your room. Once you've done that row, you want to place another row directly on top of it so that it'll hold the water and it won't leak everywhere. Once you've got all this set up, you can add the water. Start by placing one at the end and you only need to place a water source every other block and it will automatically fill the entire thing. Once you've got that, you just need to dig your trench in front and once your trench is up, you can place a water source at each end and it will be complete. All that's left to do now is to test it and then plant the cocoa beans on the jungle wall. So I'm just going to quickly test it to make sure it's all working. And it all seems to be working well. Some of the big changes in 1.3 include the new emerald block being able to trade villagers emeralds for different items and the new wooden half slabs as well as the new wooden stairs and the sandstone stairs. Apart from that, one thing that has not received so much attention is that nether wart can now grow in the overworld. So I may or may not be doing a nether wart farm tutorial soon. Uh, it's, it's a fairly straightforward farm, so we'll see. If this helped you at all and you enjoyed it, please drop me a like. If it really helped you, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.